And uh, this is uh, Kim Tool Esterbrook, who's our president of Friends of Clear Mountain. We have a dual nonprofit structure. So there's the monastic organization, which doesn't handle assets, liquid assets or money. And then we have our lay steward organization that is uh, in charge of finances. Um, so we have Kim Tool Esterbrook, who's our president. We have Jay Harrington, who's not here quite yet, I believe, but he's our secretary. We have Allison Thomas, who's our treasurer. And we have Steve Wilhelm, who's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I can give them a mic in a second. But we'll go receive our food, and they'll speak for a bit. Um. No. Now? Ah, OK. OK. Uh, so I'm Kim. Um, I know many of you. and. Um, Closer. Okay. How about now? Okay. Okay, got it. Uh, so I'm Kim. I know many of you, and um, I am on the board. Um, as everyone was coming in today, um, I just felt so much love. There was so much energy and so many faces of people that I haven't seen for a time. And I just had this amazing feeling of sangha. And for me personally, um, it was just like a desire and a longing and a dream that I had for, I feel like, decades in my practice where I was sort of practicing alone. And these last two years, um, I don't know, sometimes you can really pass over a dream come true, right? Like, she's like, oh, great, it happened. But I really felt the power of it today, seeing everybody come in. It's just beautiful. So. With this theme of sort of finding a home, as I was reflecting on it, um, I love that we started with no home, right? Like, I started sitting with a group and we were just a few people sitting in the park. Um, and I think that what it has meant for me is that I could see, like, without the foundation, the structure of a monastery, like, the, the foundation is really like this the root is the Dhamma. And the, for me, like that root is so clear and so deep with the, the beautiful way that the monastic um, ideal sort of represents that root of the Dhamma. And then from that, like this spreading out of Sangha has been like, it just feels like every week it grows and grows, and it's this beautiful foundation that has really transformed my practice. And I can, you know, the, the depth of the practitioners here is incredible. I've just never experienced anything like it, sitting with a group of people so um, earnest and dedicated and joyful and supportive. Um, it's such a gift to me. Um, I also have the, uh, the privilege of being a gratitude steward. So whenever anybody makes a donation to the Sangha, there are a handful of us um, that call. At least once every six months, we call people to thank them. And um, I hear again and again the same sort of echo, um, even from people far away, like other countries, like in, in when we can't call them, I'll send an email and I've gotten emails back from Germany and all over the world saying, I didn't have any, any guidance, right? I was practicing again in a vacuum and I found you guys. And it's, it's amazing the way this, the root of this community is rippling out into places you would have no idea. 
And so I just feel the community spreading out in such a beautiful way. And it's been such an inspiration to me. And making those gratitude calls is such a joy to hear again and again how this community is supporting people, even people that um, I may never have the chance to meet, like I'm connected. Um, and it's really quite a gift. The other thing um, that I will say is that with that amazing like root of the Dhamma, the monastics that we happen to have here have such a fresh way of teaching it. And it seems to me like one of the gifts is the way that they translate the Dhamma has really drawn um, a younger group of people in addition to, you know, like Buddhism in the West can be a little on the older side, right? But we have all of this amazing, incredibly earnest young people that seem to be drawn to the project. And it's brought such a freshness and such a joy that um, it's been really wonderful to get to know such amazing young people so dedicated to doing this really deep inner work. Um, I don't know if there's anything else for me to say, but um, thank you so much for coming and being part of this community. I just love you. <laughs> I just love you, and I love um, all of the support. Um, it's just incredible. What a dream. Hi there, folks. Um, my, my name's Steve, and I'm honored to serve with this delightful group of board persons. I'm going to just speak a little bit about the land search, and uh, a little bit will repeat what you just heard, but that's okay. Um, so balance is kind of the key word as we're negotiating this land search thing. How do we balance different aspects? Looking for the right site for Clear Mountain Monastery that will support people for years to come. Um, so when th we're trying to balance access, you know, for people from the city to be able to get there, but also solitude for the monastics to deepen their practice to be able to give back, and then also solitude for lay people to do retreat, to practice together. So balancing these aspects. Um, we're looking for a forested area a place where nature will help hold the Dharma, help support us in our journey. And, but also it has to be a forested area that people can get to. Um, so there's that, that balance. Um, and in particular, looking on something of the order of 20 acres, enough land where there can be a temple and a, and a central area, but also kutis, uh, small meditation huts scattered through the forest. Uh, it's looking something like no more than 50 minutes from here is sort of the <laughs> epicenter in our hearts from here in terms of driving uh, and hopefully less, but so people can get there. Um, if there's public transit, that'd be terrific. So don't people aren't dependent on cars. And then a real key part is alms access, alms round access, because these monastics, all they do is they go out in the morning with an alms bowl and they gotta be able to do that every morning, so either being able to walk to some sort of population center, it could be a shopping center, or have public transit transport like they use right now from uh, Southworth. And um, there's sort of a, we're doing this on multiple levels at once. There's a wonderful uh, Sandra Smith, she's a, a realtor who's a practitioner and very close, and she's out doing her professional searching and all kinds of tools that she has. There are several of, uh, several, bleh, several of us are on a team of contacting other groups all around the region, whether they're camps or retreat centers or Christian centers, all kinds of centers who know each other and just sort of getting, building bridges and connecting with them about what may be available. And then folks who are just like yourselves can step forward with tips because this is just all about community. So if you happen to know 20, min 20 acres of land that's aching to be a monastery, please tell us. <laughs> and you know, we understand financially on one level this is a tall order, but on the other hand, you know, people buy stuff, right? 
people buy yachts and whatever and people contribute and it's a mixture of generosity on many levels we have full confidence this is going to happen it's just so beautiful it's pulling people in it's going to happen so thank you Hi, everybody. Um, my name's Jay, and I've been on the board here um, pretty much since the beginning. Uh, I never imagined when I met uh, Ajahn Isabo and a uh, couple others, oh yeah, this is the directional mic, um, in a park about two years ago, I think there were four, five of us maybe, um, that two years later we'd have a crowd like this and uh, uh, monastic guests um, like this. It's just amazing what's come together in a very short time. Um, for those of you who may not be so familiar, I, I'd like to give a little background on exactly what's going on, what are these robes that are being offered, and uh, what, what the significance of today is. Um, in, the, um, in ancient India, in the time of the Buddha, uh, the uh, monks were, were um, you know, moved around quite a bit. Uh, as, as they, uh, you know, desired. But there was one part of the year when um, the rains came and the roads were impassable and people would settle down in one place for um, two or three months. And that was a period when, because people were, um, y you know, more stationary, d deeper ties were able to develop with the community of supporters. And so it was appropriate at the, at the end of that period, that was kind of the moment in the year where lay supporters would um, get together and make an offering um, to the monks who had been inspiring their practice and teaching them during that period of the rains retreat. And the traditional gift at that time, because the monastics didn't really need much, was um, robes, cloth um, that was used to make robes, uh, the, the key requisite for the monastics at that time. Um, today, the meaning of the um, this robe offering has kind of broadened out, and it's really a chance for the lay community to come together and um, and celebrate the fact that uh, you know we're a very important half of of, of the um, the combined sangha here. That that um, uh, it, it's the goodness of our generosity that that in part makes this all possible, and so um, you know we're celebrating that generosity in all the forms in which it's manifest. Um, you the people who have uh, fed the monks during their alms round, um, the wonderful people who have housed uh, the monastics, and um, the people who have supported the Sangha financially. Um, one of the things that I have always personally found very inspiring about monastics in this tradition is how simple their needs are. Um, really just a place to rest their heads and a daily meal. Um, but the ambition for Clear Mountain is quite ambitious or, or quite large. You know, it's, it's, it's a grand vision. Uh, we're looking to have a place that can house monastics and also be a, um, a, a kind of heart for the community of lay people that grow up around it. And as Steve was saying, it's going to be a special piece of land, uh, not easy to find. And when we find it, probably even harder to, to purchase. Everybody knows that land in the Seattle area is expensive, and beyond purchasing land, there's, um, there's the need to you know, fund the construction that will come after. So, um, I'm gonna have to look at my notes for a sec. <laughs> okay, um, so it, it's an ambitious vision, but Based on what we've seen um, in the West as this tradition has come here, um, amazing things can happen when the, um, you know, the, these inspiring monastics that we have the privilege to learn from come together with the community of dedicated practitioners. Um, monasteries, amazing monasteries have grown up very quickly. And um, I really wonder whether any of them has had the kind of running start that Clear Mountain has had just in two years to have a gathering like this is, is mind-blowing. So it's going to be a journey. Um, we'll all be contributing to it in various ways, um, but I'm very optimistic about it and I'm very excited to be on the journey with y'all. Thank you. Um, hello everyone, my name's Allison and uh, I'm the treasurer for Friends of Clare Mountain. I didn't know that when I was getting my accounting degree, I was getting ready to <laughs> transcend to a wonderful um, 
opportunity. It's just been a real pure joy to be part of this. Um, and uh, being that I like numbers and not saying so many words in front of people, I will just uh, cut to, um, yes, so myself and Trenton are in the back. Uh, there's a donation table. You can come visit us if you feel inspired. Um, but definitely, please, there are books that are here for free and um, help yourself take as many as you would like. Um, we have some wonderful tote bags that uh, were um, kindly sponsored by um, some folks from the community. And also there's a newsletter that if you wanna stay up to date with Clare Mountain Monastery going on, so Friends of Clare Mountain, um, please do sign up. And also you can go to clairemountainmonastery.org um, which would also lead you, to lead you to Friends of Clare Mountain. But thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart for being here and having the opportunity to sit with you all um, here and beyond, I apparently in different countries. It's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and so now, um, so Juanita, tell me if I'm not saying the right things. Um, but with the, um, with the meal, so um, there are different tables. There's a vegetarian table that's labeled. There might be two of those, a vegan table, and then a non-vegetarian table as well. If you brought something um, and you want it back, please, at the end of the gathering, gather up your uh, containers and utensils. Um, but you should find everything... There. Anything else, Juanita? Yes, Allison. Uh, I'll, uh, oh, ten I think city. So I, right. I can announce that, Kim, as well. If that's yes, possible. so the leftover food, right? The tent city um, is moving in, and so... Um, uh, the leftover food is going to be donated to the tent city. So if you have not labeled your dish, um, there's some tape back there. Be sure to put your name on it if it's something that you uh, need back. And you can help um, pack things up at the end um, to offer to the tent city. So this is Anamodana rejoicing in your goodness. Sambaro Gavin Murta Saba Santa Bava Jito Samba Vera Mati Canto Nebuta Chetavang Bava Sambi Tio Iwajan to Sambaro Suki di Kayuko Bava Habiva Dana Sili Sani Chang Wuda Pachaino Chataro Dama Wadanti Ayuano Sukang every good blessing may all the devas protect you by the power of all the buddhas may you ever be well may you have every good blessing may all the devas protect you by the power of all the dhamma may you ever be well may you have every good blessing may all the devas protect you by the power of all the sangha may you ever be well